Hey everybody, it's Pete from MyJuryBench.com. Today we're going to work on this beautiful diamond pendant. Um, it's a design that I had in my mind and it just came to me one day and I decided that I was going to show you all how to make this in Blender 2.9X, so any version of 2.9. 2.8 will work also for most of these. Um, you'll need the add-ons, Jewelcraft, to uh, work with this and I'm going to walk you through each step of the process. If you haven't already checked out my, uh, BlenderGems.com for 3D models, I put a lot of related jewelry items on there and I'll be expanding that to include other 3D models in the near future. So check it out when you get a chance. Let's get started. Okay, so we're, let's get started with this. We're gonna actually get rid of this obligatory cube, so I'm gonna press that, select it with the left mouse button, I'm gonna press X to delete it, and it is gone. Now we're up here at the tools menu. I'm gonna turn on my screencast keys, and we'll get those oriented. They'll appear in the middle here. And let's go back to our modeling. Okay, so because of the way I'm designing this with a pear-shaped diamond, the first thing I wanna do is add in the diamond. Um, we are going to use a 5x7 or a 7x5mm diamond pear shape. So I'm going to come over to Jewelcraft. I'm going to hit Add. I'm going to select a pear shape first. So we'll select that under Jewelcraft. And then I'm going to type 7 millimeters. And why I'm doing that is because the Jewelcraft tool, um, it goes by the longest side of the diamond. So if you're going to use a 7x5, then you'd select 7 and then press OK. So here it puts in a stone that's seven by five millimeters. And if we look at the measurements on there, we see it's seven millimeters by approximately, uh, what, 4.38. That's not too bad. Um, we're gonna leave it at that. Uh, I could make this a little wider if I want to, if I hit S and then X and make this uh, about five millimeters. That gives us the stone that we're gonna work with right about there. So the next step we're gonna take is to add in the prongs for this. And to do that, I'm gonna use a uh, path tool. So to, to add in that path, I'm gonna hit Shift A. We're gonna come over to Curve Properties and I'm gonna hit Path. And that adds in a path. And if I hit S to size that, you can see it sizes it along the X axis, which is pretty good right now. But we're gonna rotate that RZ90. And now if I press Tab, you can see it's sized approximately along the Y axis. If I go into three on my keep, keypad or hit uh, the tilde key on my standard keypad, I can come over to front, left, right, whatever I want to do. So if I hit left, you can see we're looking at it from the left. If I hit tilde again and go to right, we're looking at it from the right side. Okay, so that's the same as hitting the three key on your keypad uh, if you have a numeric keypad. The next thing I need to do is adjust the way these prongs look. I'm going to bring this one, actually we're going to leave it right in the middle. I'm going to hit uh, this vertex right here. I'm going to bring that down. And you can see this black line is the line that I'm working with. So I'm gonna select these two right here, hold the shift key, select with the left mouse button. So you select both of those points and bring that over. I'm gonna bring this one over to the right, just about like so. And I'm gonna grab this one, G key, I'm gonna bring that up to about here. And again, we're gonna do the same with this particular one. And we're gonna make some adjustments to this as we go a little farther, you'll see in just a minute. Okay, now I wanna take this uh, side right here and I'm going to bring that out just a little bit so that it comes out. We're going to move this over so that we have much more of an arched path. Let's go back into edit mode. I'm going to select this point here. Hold the shift key down with the left mouse button. Select the opposite side. Hit E to extrude and then Z to bring these up. Oh, I hit the wrong key. So let's do uh, escape. E to extrude. Z and we'll bring those straight up. And I'm going to size these in, so I'm going to hit S and then size them over so that they're coming across. And you can see our path is overlapping the diamond, and that's okay. We're going to make some adjustments to this right now. Let's go back into this edit mode with the tab key, and I'm going to grab this point here. And I'm going to bring this out. I'm going to grab this point here. I'm going to bring that out to the left, and that looks pretty good. I'm going to bring this down down a little bit with the G key. I'm gonna hold that and bring that down to about here. Let's bring this up a little bit, G, and bring that in like that. And then G, I think that looks pretty good. Let's go back into object mode and there is the path that we want. It looks like we're still a little too close here. So let's get back here, grab this point and bring that out just like so. 
And I'm going to do the same here just to bring that out and stretch it just a little bit. Like that. Okay. Go back into object mode and with that path outlined the way I want it, I'm going to come over to the path properties right here. We're going to select that. We're going to come over to geometry and I am going to select not extrude, but we're going to come over to depth. I'm going to increase that until we get a nice little shape to our model and I want it to kind of overlap our stone just a little bit so it looks like it's going to hold it in place. That looks good about there. I like that way that looks. We're also going to hit fill caps so that it fills the endpoints on the, on the path that we made. Now remember you can turn that off and get like a hollow tube but we want that filled in so fill caps fills those two end caps up with a solid uh, face. Now let's go back into view the th from the side, three view, and I'm going to press tab to go into edit mode and I'm going to make some modification to this now that it, it's all set here. So I'm going to take this point here, I'm going to bring that in just a little bit because we want that to encompass that point. I'm going to grab this one over and just kind of move it to the side so that our cutlet is just about on top of that or just above it. And I'm going to grab this point, I'm going to bring this down just a little bit like so. I'm going to grab this point here. G and I'm going to move that down just like that. Let's make this one a little bit shorter like so. Okay now with this point selected I'm going to press the alt key hold the alt key down and press the s key and now if I move that in you can see I can adjust the point there. I'm going to move my cursor a little bit over here alt s and then I can make a little point out of that just like so and then we're going to come over grab this particular point right here. Again I'll move my mouse out of the way Alt S and then I'll bring it in and just make a little point out of that. And what I'm trying to do is basically just get a point out of that particular end cap on the head or the prong. Now I want to make this particular head a little wider here. So I'm going to grab this particular point here, move my mouse over a little bit, press Alt S and then I'm going to size that up just a little bit just like so. So that gives us a nice beefy uh, point inside to attach the point of the pear-shaped diamond. Okay, let's go back into object mode. I think that looks pretty good. Now we have to make the other path to do the two side prongs that are going to hold this in position. So I'm going to again press shift A to add. I'm going to come over to curve and we're going to add it in another path. Okay, so I'm going to look at this from the front view press tab. You can see there's our path. I'm going to size this up a little bit, S, and then size it up. And then we're going to grab this particular vertex. We're going to bring that down to about here so that we're kind of covering the bottom here. Now that might be too far, so we'll know in a minute when I grab these two particular points with the shift key held, I've got those two points made. And I'm going to bring that down just about like so. And let's bring this one back up. Let's grab these two, bring those down, and now I'm going to grab these two prongs, shift, select, and I'm going to hit E to extrude, ZZ to bring them straight up, and then S to size, size them in, and that looks pretty good. I like the way that looks. I'm going to go back into object mode, and there's the path for the two prongs that I want on either side. And if we look at this from the top, we might want to move this whole piece over a little bit just to give us a little bit of strength just under the wide point of this pear shape. Now remember when you cut your prongs you're going to dig a hole into the prong here and just a cut on this particular one to hold that round edge. The point has to be embedded in the prong so that you aren't going to break the point but uh, it, it'll give you a point at which to mount it. Okay, so now that I've got the path outlined there, we're going to add in the same kind of a uh, bevel for that. So we're going to come down to properties. I'm going to come down to bevel and we're going to give this, oops, let's get the right one. Let's select that one and let's bring that up to about 0.44, about like so. And let's just take a quick gander at this. Oh, let's turn on fill caps because we want to make sure we've got those caps filled. So far, so good. If we look at this from the side view, go into edit mode and I'm going to grab this point here. I'm going to bring that up so that it is about even with the other original prong or set of prongs that we made, just like that. Again, we're going to select this point here. 
that vertex, and I'm going to hold the shift key down, select the opposite one, uh, move, move my mouse over a little bit, press Alt S, oops, cancel that, Alt S, and then I'm going to size that down to about a point. I'm going to look at this from the view here. I'm going to grab this particular point here. I'm going to bring that down just like so. And we're going to bring that one down just like so. And that looks pretty good to me. And again, we want to make this particular point here. And I'm going to hold the shift key down, select that particular point, And again, Alt S. And I'm going to make those just a little bit bigger and bulkier so that we don't have much of a taper, uh, except for the points of our prongs. Okay, that part is done. That looks pretty good. The next thing I want to do is add the frame for the small diamonds on this particular piece. So now what I need to do is add in another path, and the path is going to represent the, the frame or the outline of the uh, diamonds that go all the way up to the pendant. So we're going to hit Shift A. I'm going to add in another curve, and we're going to add in another path. Okay, I'm going to hit S and size that up. And then I'm going to rotate that RZ90, so it's going straight up and down. Press Enter. And the next step is go in Edit Mode, Select All. So select all your vertices, and right-click and come down to Subdivide. And I've subdivided that once, and then we're going to leave it like that. And now I'm just going to start grabbing these points from the top view, and I'm just going to start moving them where I want them. And we're going to try to create an outline for this particular frame so that we can make it curve around our piece. Grab that, and like so. Now I want this to be all encompassing of the uh, diamond here, so I'm just gonna make that a little bit like so. And then we're going to add in some depth to this. And I'm going to grab this one, extrude along the Y axis. We're going to bring that straight up. And I'm going to bring this over just a little bit like that so that if we look at this from the top down. Now you can see we have this little archway that comes all the way around. And if I want to make any changes to it, I can do it once I've added some dimension to this particular piece. Okay, so I've got that done. And the height, if I look at this from the side view, we'll look at it from three on the keyboard. I'm going to lower this down just a little bit so it's about here. And then I'm going to come over to the Curve Properties tab here, right there. And we're going to select that. We're going to come over to Extrude, and I'm going to extrude this so that it gives us some nice width. And I think that looks good. I'm going to bring this whole piece down just a little bit. And I like the way that looks. We'll look at it from the top down. We can't see anything. So now I'm going to add in a solidify modifier. So with that still selected, I'm going to hit the modifiers tab, add a solidify modifier. And you can see it starts to add it there. And then I'm going to adjust this so that it goes outward, just like so. And I'm going to make it about yay wide. I'm going to right click on this, come down to shade flat. That gives me a nice flat surface to look at. So far, so good. Now, I also want to taper this particular end over here. So to do that, I'm going to go into edit mode. I'm going to grab this particular point, press Alt S, and then I'm going to bring my mouse in just to taper that in ever so slightly. And then from the side view, I'm going to bring that up so that the top is actually flat. <clears throat> just like so. And you can see across the top of the pendant, we're pretty flat there. I'm going to grab this one. I'm going to hit Alt S. I'm going to slide that in a little bit and then just move that up so that we get a little bit of a longer taper. And that looks good to me. I, I kind of like the way that looks. Okay, so done so far. I'm, I'm really liking the way that is. And I'm going to come back over to my properties tab for my curve. And I'm going to bump this up to, let's say, 18. And that'll just give us a little smoother surface to work with that. Okay, let's make some changes to this while I've got this on the screen. So we want these sections to be a little closer to our pendant. So first thing I'm going to do is just hit S and then size it down just a little bit like so. It doesn't have to be that big. And I'm going to bring it into about here so that you can see it's touching the prong. And let's get back over there. And 
almost, we're going to size it down just a little bit more. I want that prong to be in here. And with that selected, I'm going to come over to my solidify modifier and just bring that up a little bit more. I want that a little wider, just like that. So this prong is touching right here. And we have this prong touching the frame right there. That looks good. I need to move this side over so that it's touching there. So I'm going to go to the top down view. I'm going to grab our pennant, go into edit mode. And now I'm going to start moving the geometry in just a little bit with the G key. I'm going to take that in like that. And then I'm going to grab this and I'm going to move it in like so, just so that we have the pair prongs held in three places along this, that, that whole frame of our pendant. Okay, and if we look at that from the side view or at an angle, you can see it's holding there pretty good. Now, that's not enough to add in enough support for this. We're also going to make a bridge that goes across this, but we're not going to do it just yet. Okay, so that's done. Now I want to duplicate this whole uh, arch because we're going to use it to do our gem path and our cutout path. Okay, so to do that, what we're going to do is hit Shift D with that selected, press Enter. And now I've made a duplicate copy of that. I'm going to bring that up. I'm going to come over to the modifiers for our new uh, path. And I am going to remove the modifier for solidify. And then we're going to come over to the curve geometry, change that back to zero. So I'm left with just a path. From the top view now, you can see we've got our path in the right place. But we need to adjust it because I need this orange line to be in the center of this frame that we made. Hit the tab key, I'm going to come over here and I'm going, to move, I'm going to start moving this over so that we get each one of these lines approximately in the middle of our path. And it's going to take a little bit of finagling, but just work your way around. You'll get it all adjusted. Let's come back here. Okay, I'm going to move that one up a little bit, just about like so. Let's move this one in a little bit. Go back into object mode, and you can see the orange line, which represents our new path, is just about in the middle. I'm going to come back and adjust this last one here, this bottom piece, just ever so slightly, right about there. And this one could come in just a little bit. I'm just going to bring that in just a little bit, right like that. Okay. So there's our path. Now what I want to do is I want to name this. We're going to call this, I'm going to double click over here. We're going to call this uh, gem path one. Okay. And for the NURBS curve that we made originally, that is our first set of prongs. So I'm going to double click that and name it prongs one. And then we will grab this piece and we're going to double click that and type in prongs two. And I'm just going to rename these and pendant frame. That looks good to me so that I've got everything situated there. I'm going to grab this path right here. And I am going to make another copy of it. Shift D, then press Enter. And I'm going to bring that up a little bit so I've got another copy here. And what we're going to do is we're going to name this cutter path. Now, these aren't the cutters that you're thinking of. Those uh, the cutters that you're probably thinking of are for the gems. I'm going to bring this down to the surface of our pendant. <clears throat> About like so. I'm going to look at this from the side view, and you can see I've got to make some changes to it because we're a little high right here. I'm going to bring that down just like that, and we're going to bring this one down just like that. And I press tab, and I'm going to do the same over here with this piece. I'm going to bring this one down just ever so slightly. And then we'll bring that one down ever so slightly so that we're nice and flat. Okay, so I've got those two done. Um, this piece I'm going to leave right there, but now we want to attach our diamonds to this. And I'm going to use 1.4 millimeter diamonds all the way around. And we're going to adjust the length and quantity of those diamonds with the Jewelcraft tool. So first things first, let's grab a new diamond. We've got to add in a 1.4 millimeter. Come over to Jewelcraft, select Add Gem. I'm going to type in 1.4, representing 1.4 millimeters. And now we're going to select a round diamond. With that done, we're going to press OK to add that stone in. OK, so we have to select that diamond. We've got that selected. We're going to hold the Shift key down, and we're going to select the diamond path. So I'm going to click here. We've got those two selected. I'm going to come over to the Jewelcraft tool. 
going to come over to the jeweling part and I'm going to hit distribute on curve. Now you see it puts the diamonds across there. We're going to open up this little panel right here and that allows us to change the starting and ending locations. The first thing we're going to do So I'm going to adjust the starting location to about right here. And then the ending location, I want to be uh, probably about three quarters of an inch down from the pendant. So I'm going to grab that ending location. I'm going to bring that in to about here. That looks good for me. And I'm going to just go around here, take a look at the diamonds on that. That looks okay so far. Now let's increase the quantity. I'm going to jump this up until they're about touching each other, uh, about like so. Okay, that gives us 20 diamonds going around the tear-shaped or pear-shaped diamond, and that looks good to me. And if I want to adjust the offset, I can do that now. So I can come over to offset and just drop that up or down a little bit. I'm going to bring that down to about the surface of that pendant. Now, you can see if I look at this from the side view, uh, let's go here. I've got that little bottom edge of the pendant on the diamond, on the pear-shaped diamond, and that's okay. We, we can get away with that on this particular pendant. I like the way that looks. I've got uh, 20 1.4 millimeter diamonds, and I'm happy with those. So I'm going to leave those there. Now we're going to grab this path, and this is going to be the cutter path, but not the cutter path that you're thinking of. So we're going to bring that down just a little bit, and I'm going to leave that there. And what I want to do is add in a cube. So I'm going to hit Shift A. We're going to come over to Mesh. And I'm going to come up to cube and select that. And what I want to do is this, I want to, I'm going to bring this up a little bit. I'm going to hit S to size that down and then S, X to make it a little bit wider. Okay. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to show you in a second. We're also going to modify this a little bit. So I'm going to hit, uh, oh, let's see here, tab. I'm going to come into control R and add in two loop cuts. I click once, I'm going to hit SX. I'm going to make those a little narrower, just about like so. Then I'm going to go three on my keypad or three on my keyboard. I'm going to hit extrude ZZ and I'm going to bring that down to about like this. This gives me a nice T-shaped cutter. I'm going to hit tab and I'm going to size this SY. I'm going to make that a little narrower. Okay. Okay, so we've got this odd shaped thing. I'm going to hit control A to adjust the rotation and scale. Okay. So that's the rotation and scale that I want to use, and I want to follow this along the path that we had, that we just created. So I'm going to hold that down. With the shift key selected, I'm going to grab this cutter path, and I'm going to bring this whole selection down a little bit, and then I am going to distribute on curve with the jewel craft tool. Now you can see it kind of makes this a little bit bigger. So let's adjust the size, and I'm going to bring that down to about like so. And you can see I've got little cutters throughout my frame. That looks relatively good. Um, let's see here. Tilt offset. The offset looks pretty good. If I go into side view, I'm going to bring that offset down just a little bit more, about like that. Okay. That looks about perfect. And I'm happy with the placement of that, also cutting all the way through the frame. Now, we've got a problem with this one, but we'll deal with that later. So, now I'm going to click off of this, so I'm making that placement permanent with the following the path. Now, let's just look at, from the side view, I'm going to zoom in. <clears throat> These are a little bit too, too tall, so I'm going to hit SZ. I'm going to size this one down. I'm going to bring this up a little bit just like so. We're going to do the same for this one. SZ, you're going to size that one down. Uh, actually, S, I'm going to actually make that one a little bit smaller, and we'll bring that up a little bit, just like we did before. And then SZ on this one, and I'm going to just adjust these as needed across the entire path. S, I'm going to bring that down a little bit, just like so. Okay, I like the way that looks. Now it's time to grab each of these and start cutting them out of our frame. It's not that difficult to do. So what we're going to do is use the Boolean tool. We're going to grab a couple of these. Hold the shift key down with that selected. And I'm going to just grab maybe five of these. Then we'll grab our pendant frame. Oh, wait, before we do anything else, we got to convert this to a mesh. So I didn't do that yet. So I'm going to hit right click on that. I'm going to come down to convert to a mesh. Okay, so now this particular piece, if we look at it on our 
path here. You can see it's represented by a triangle, which means it's a, a mesh. Remember, if you have a little curve mark here, this little backwards C thing, that means it's a, path, uh, a curve. So this one is a mesh, we're good. Okay, let's grab five more of these particular little cutters. And I'm gonna grab the pendant last. We're gonna come over to the Boolean tool and do a difference. You can see it cuts it out and we make holes in the bottom. Now, if we look at these, I'm gonna zoom in, shift B, just so we can zoom in a little bit here. You can see the cutters are in good shape. That's exactly what I'm looking for. The tips of the diamonds are poking through. That looks really good. So I'm gonna keep doing that until I get rid of all of these 20 cutters. So I'll select this one, hold the shift key down. We'll just grab a couple of the other ones. I'll do five at a, yeah, we'll do five at a time. Select our pendant last and then do a difference. Again, looking good. Let's just keep doing that. And select the pendant last and then Boolean difference. We got four left, click, shift, click again. I've selected those four and then we'll grab our pendant last and do a difference on those. So now I've got all these cutters. Uh, I've made the frame basically a little bit hollowed out. That's gonna save us weight on gold and that's important when you're designing a pendant because you don't want to have too much weight on that. Okay, the next thing I need to do is add in the cutters for the gemstones. Pretty simple to do. We're gonna grab a stone. We're gonna go over to the jewel craft tool under select by trait, we're gonna select by size because we're only, we only want those round diamonds that are 1.4 millimeter. And now we're gonna add in the cutters. So with the jewel craft tool selected, I'm going to select cutter. And you can see here before I make any changes, there is our cutters. They protrude a little bit too far through the uh, pendant itself. So we're gonna, we're gonna raise the height of that bottom edge, which is right here. So I'm gonna make that a little smaller and you'll see the bottoms come up and I want them to be about like that. I'm also gonna make them just a little bit narrower. So under size, I'm gonna bring those down and just make them about 0.7 millimeters. Okay, so I've got a nice frame there with all the cutters selected. And now what I wanna do is basically the same thing with these cutters that we did with the square cutters. So I'm gonna select a few of these, hold the shift key down, grab a next five or six. I'm just going to grab six. The last one we'll select is dependent. And then again, back to Boolean, and we will do a Boolean difference. And that put in a nice round cutter for that. If you want to see that, you can zoom in here. You can see the cutters perfectly cut out of there. So I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to select all these diamond cutters. Shift key down. We're going to select a few more. That looks good. We'll select our pendant last. Boolean difference. And then we've got these eight or so, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then the last thing we grab is the pendant, do a Boolean difference. Okay, so now I've cut those out. The last thing I need to do for the diamonds is again, we're gonna select a diamond, go back to jewel craft, select by trait, and then uh, not stone, but size. So I've got all the uh, round diamonds selected. And we're gonna come back here to prongs. Now this is gonna add in two prongs. They're a little bit too big. However, um, I could work with that if I wanted to. I can change the uh, position uh, just about like so and have those situated like that with the prongs overlapping a little bit. That's not an awkward thing to do, but you see it doesn't work all the way around. Some of those are a little different. So we're gonna actually make that a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna bring the diameter down just so I'm hiding most of the outside prongs. Here's one left, we're just gonna adjust that a little bit more, about like so. There we go. Now that solves the problem with two prongs in between each diamond with the possible exceptions or the definite exception of the last and the first diamond. So we'll deal with that momentarily. So here we have a top height of 0.4 millimeters. So if we look at the uh, top, I'm going to leave that just like so because these will get cut down in uh, setting. We'll polish those up. And it looks like we're okay all the way around with a couple exceptions. This one right here, but no big deal. I'm going to leave that just as it is. So let's take a look at our settings. 0 0.4, 0 0.4, bottom 0 0.6. We're going to leave that just the same. Okay, now with that done, I'm going to grab this first diamond here. 
and zoom in, and we're gonna come back to prongs. You can see we've got two prongs there, so we're gonna drop that down to one. I'm going to adjust the position so that we rotate that around like so. And then again, we're gonna change the diameter to 0.4, and we'll leave the bottom just as it is. Okay, it looks good so far. Let's do that same thing to this diamond. So let's grab that diamond. We'll add in a prong. Again, we get two, so let's drop that down. We're going to change this to 0.4. And then I'm going to adjust the position, right like so. Okay, that looks good. That is our pendant so far. And I'm pretty happy with that. If I needed to adjust these, I could rotate this RZ just to do a little bit of a trick like that to get rid of that. I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to leave it like that, guys. Okay, done so far. Let's deal with the last two curves that we're dealing with on this particular pendant. I've got this particular piece and this particular piece right here. Those both represented by curves. If we come over to our object uh, list right here, you can see prongs one and prongs two are curves. So we're going to actually convert those by right-clicking on those. And we are going to convert, or is it? Convert to a mesh right there. And then I'm going to select this particular piece. We're going to do the same thing, convert to a mesh. Now, those two prongs are now meshes and permanently set into our model. Okay. Again, I want to deal with the fact that the bottom part of this frame is a little bit on the weak side. So to deal with that, here's how I'm going to handle it. We're going to come over, we're going to hit Shift A. I'm going to add in a new curve path, okay? And I'm going to bring this, I'm actually bringing this down, just like so. <clears throat> and if I look at this from the bottom side, I'm going to size that along the X axis, just like so. I'm going to move this over to here. And the reason I'm moving it over there is because we're going to do a little trick. I want this to be you notice, I'm going to zoom in here, I want this line, this, this line about right in the middle of these two openings where the diamonds go. And I want it cutting right through the bottom of the prong. Okay, so far so good. Now let's give this some more properties. Uh, now over here you can see we're a little off. If I want to, I can adjust it, just move it over ever so slightly. I could even rotate it to make it a little bit better if I want. Maybe I'll do that, RZ. And let's just rotate that a little bit so that we're about in the middle. Okay, so now that I have this, this path covered from there, what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the path properties or the uh, curve properties and look at the geometry for that. And we're going to give this a bit of uh, a depth. So I'm going to increase this and make it round and cover it to about here. And we're going to look at both of these to make sure we're centered there and centered there. We zoom in. That looks pretty good. Okay, so I've got that situated correctly, and that's going to give us some support from one side of the pendant to the opposite side, and it makes this head just a little bit stronger on the frame. And if we want, we could actually do um, a small path from from here to here. I think I'm going to leave it at that because I think that's going to be good enough with the attachment to the pendant. Okay, the next thing is I have to join all of these together to make one pendant out of that. So what we're going to do is we are going to um, start selecting our prongs and I can actually look at this from the side and if I hide the diamonds, so if we select all the diamonds, shift so I've got all the diamonds selected, and I'm going to press H to hide those. And I'm going to select this diamond, and we're going to press H to hide that. And now we're just looking at the pendant. So now what I want to do is basically join all of these together. So now with each of these prongs selected, I'm going to just go and grab as many of them as I can. And it looks like I'm going to have to do this our way, guys. Select our pendant last, and then we are going to come over to the Boolean tool and do a union. Okay, so now let's grab this one. Let's just keep grabbing prongs. And I'm just going to select them all. Grab that last one. And 
grab the pendant and we'll do a union. Okay, so our prongs are all attached. Now we can get rid of this. And so far so good. Let's take this piece and let's take all the frames for the prong and the prongs themselves and we will do a union on those. Okay, so those are all set. And last thing, we'll take our pendant and our prongs and we will union those. So now we have one piece and it's perfect. Look at that, control Z. And let's just move that back out of the way. Let's get rid of this path here. Okay, now we'll take that, bring that back down. I'm gonna render this out. We're gonna take a look at what it looks like in uh, with some material on it, and you can tell me what you think. I hope that helps you to design something like this. I'm gonna actually put this model up on blendergems.com where you can go and uh, download this. I'm gonna put on, uh, if you want to, I'm gonna put a dollar donation on there. So for a buck, you can download this particular model, and I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching, guys, and have a great day. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>